LIGO stands for the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. And when you traditionally think about an observatory, you get a mental picture of somebody peeking through a viewfinder, looking out into space through a telescope that's designed to receive light. What LIGO does and what makes it unique is LIGO measures gravitational waves, which don't show up like light. A nice view, uh, for me personally, on how sensitive the LIGO interferometer is, is to equate this interferometer to a weighing scale. If you took all the sand off all the beaches on Earth, pile it on our weighing scale, the LIGO detector is sufficiently sensitive where you could detect the removal of less than a grain of sand. Precision as relates to our design task is really, that's, that's everything for us. We've designed the best antennas we can in the form of photo detectors and interferometers. We then have to marry it with a really good front end amp. My goal in designing the 8797 was to make the most precise op amp in all respects that there was. The number one spec was to be less than one nanovolt per root hertz, which is a measure of noise. It's very difficult to get below that. So we achieved about 0.9 nanovolts per root hertz for the first time in an op amp. We use that in a key piece of LIGO to stabilize the amplitude of the laser, in the absence of which fluctuations could appear like signals. That's why we need such a, a, a focused and non-garden variety solution. LIGO wasn't possible in 1991. The 797 was already there, and it hasn't changed. You know, it's the same part it always was. So it was sort of waiting. So literally ahead of what's possible. We've always been in the leaders at high performance. People expect us to provide high performance and whenever they're starting with a new design concept, they'll go with our products first. When the gravitational wave was incident upon LIGO and we detected it back in September, the very last component that was inside our vacuum system that touched, if you will, that signal was a dual op amp, an analog device is 8672. If anything had have been wrong with that chip, we never would have seen uh, these gravitational waves. In 1915, Einstein wrote a paper on general relativity. He postulated this, the existence of gravitational radiation. Einstein said that he thought that this measurement could never actually be done. They found Einstein's waves 100 years later, and it happened right here, and there's the machine that did it. There's just nothing better. And I know our parts are in there. Analog Devices has been supporting precision applications, earth observation, communication, positioning, launch vehicles, as well as space exploration for over 40 years now. When you think about what's in space and what's beyond what we know right now, it's mind-boggling. Some of the things that are being discovered, whether it's black holes or gravitational waves or any number of things, it's just exciting to think that we're on the leading edge of that.